Hi, I'm Dr. Marcus Tai, Dean of the College of Health Professions, and I am pleased to welcome you to PACE and CHP. Throughout your journey to becoming a healthcare professional or working in related fields, you will encounter practitioners from a variety of healthcare fields. Your participation in this activity will help familiarize you with the roles and scope of practice of other healthcare professions and empower you to feel more confident when collaborating within and across fields. In order for healthcare teams to function effectively and provide optimal patient care, it is essential that all members maintain a climate of mutual respect and shared values. Our goal at CHP is to help foster this understanding and respect from the very start of your education, instilling the values of interprofessional collaboration so that you will carry them with you throughout your career. My name is Marie Lords Charles and I am a registered nurse. Registered nurses typically spend the most amount of time with patients. Nurses care for patients from birth or even before birth to the end of life. Although generally associated with hospitals and other inpatient settings, nurses care for clients at home, school, place of employment, clinics, assisted living, senior housing, adult homes, group homes, supportive housing, naturally occurring retirement communities, and even houses of worship. The reason why we work in so many settings is because we do more than caring for the sick. We promote wellness and help prevent disease. For example, community health nurses tend to focus on wellness and disease prevention, which involves screening, screening clients for early detection and prevention of diseases. Additionally, Nurses do a lot of teaching, especially in the community. Nurses care for individuals with every disease entity known to men, from acute to chronic stages. To accomplish this, nurses collaborate with other members of the healthcare team to conduct assessments, develop care plans, participate in interdisciplinary care meetings, teach and provide care, and disease management to clients across the lifespan. What do I do when I meet a patient for the first time? It starts with before seeing the patient. As a community health nurse, I uh, specialize in home care. As such, my day starts with reviewing relevant documentation on each client on my assignment for the day. I call patients to schedule the visit based on acuity, location, and other factors. Upon meeting the patient after the introductions, I explain to the patient the purpose of the visit and elicit the patient's understanding and expectations. I do an interview and physical assessment and proceed with teaching and providing care. My initial visit always includes physical assessment, medication reconciliation and teaching, home safety assessment. I may also provide skill care, such as wound care, insulin administration, et cetera. Based on the results of my assessment, I communicate with medical providers on the status of the patient. At times, I may obtain orders from the medical providers for physical therapy, occupational therapy, medical social workers, behavioral behavioral health and nutritionists. I terminate my visit when I'm sure that patients' questions have been answered and a level of comfort and understanding have been reached. I schedule follow-up visits if needed. Some of the coordination may take place outside the patient's home because professionals are not always readily available for consultation. Uh, in addition to that, they level the amount of documentation I have to do, sometimes required a few more hours after the patient's visits. My name is Christina Amendola, and I'm a licensed and certified physician assistant. 
PAs are healthcare providers who take medical histories, conduct physical exams, diagnose, and treat illness. We order and interpret tests, develop treatment plans, prescribe medication, counsel, and educate patients. PAs perform procedures and assist in surgery. PAs can participate in clinical research or go on to educate future providers. PAs can practice in a variety of settings and specialties and provide patient care in medical teams with physicians and other healthcare providers. PAs can further advance their certification through CAQs, which are Certificates of Advanced Qualification Specialties, which is a voluntary credential that certified PAs can earn, allowing PAs to achieve recognition for their specialty experience, skills, and knowledge. PAs differ from NPs and MDs in that we do not have to specialize during our training. Rather, we can specialize in our professional practice and switch specialties without additional training or certification. Because of this, PAs are very versatile in healthcare and can readily assist areas in need. When I encounter a patient for the first time, I introduce myself as the physician assistant and verify the patient information. I then begin my history followed by my physical exam. At this point, I would review the patient's chart for additional information and consult with a physician, nurse, or other providers as needed. My name is Jessica Tostow, and I'm a Registered Dietitian Nutritionist, or RDN. RDNs are food and nutrition experts who can translate the science of nutrition into practical solutions for healthy living. We use our nutrition expertise to help individuals make unique, positive lifestyle changes and advocate for advancing the health and nutrition status of people all around the world. We work throughout the community in hospitals, nursing homes, schools, public health organizations, food service operations, universities, research, and private practice. Dietitians work with patients and clients throughout every stage of the life cycle, from preconception to end of life, providing medical nutrition therapy, nutrition education and counseling, and cognitive behavioral therapy. We can provide lactation counseling support, physical activity guidance, and lifestyle coaching. We recommend, and in some instances, even order therapeutic diets and nutrition support for patients who cannot eat by mouth. We conduct nutrition-focused physical exams to look for signs of malnutrition, such as muscle and fat loss, or nutrient deficiencies. We evaluate nutritionally relevant labs, investigate medication and nutrient interactions, and can recommend dietary supplements and over-the-counter medications. Dietitians are an integral part of the interprofessional healthcare team, as nearly every disease state and body system can be impacted by nutrition status. We collaborate with other members of the healthcare team to conduct screenings and generate referrals, develop care plans, provide insight into how nutrition is affecting other body systems, such as poor wound healing or infections, and participate in interdisciplinary care meetings. The first time I meet a patient, um, I always review the medical record, look at past medical history, any nutrition-related labs, medications, orders, and notes from other providers. When I meet with the patient and caregiver, the first thing I do is get their nutrition-related history. So that focuses on food and diet history, any weight changes they've had, and it's especially important to note if they're intentional or unintentional weight loss. I ask about GI issues, so nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. Uh, we screen for ability to chew and swallow and ask about any supplements they might be taking. Then we move on to discuss their nutrition concerns and their goals of care. Um, and then I always, after meeting with the patient, I always communicate with other members of the healthcare team to share the information uh, that we discussed and to, to work together to come up with a plan of care. My name is Lisa Raymond Tolan, and I am an occupational therapist, or OT. OTs work with clients for the purpose of enhancing or enabling participation in the meaningful activities or occupations throughout the lifespan. Our interventions aim to promote physical and mental health and well being by supporting occupational performance in people with or at risk of experiencing a range of developmental, physical, and mental health disorders. The process of occupational therapy refers to the delivery of services and includes evaluating, intervening, and the targeting of outcomes. The OT process is client-centered, involving collaborations with the client throughout each aspect of service delivery. 
there are many service delivery approaches, including direct, such as working with a person um, individually or leading a group session, and interacting with clients and families and caregivers through telehealth systems. And also indirect, so working indirectly on the client's behalf, like consultation to teachers, working on multidisciplinary teams, and community planning agencies. And services can be delivered at the person, group, or population level. So the steps that an OT takes when encountering a new client for the first time is about generating an occupational profile, um, and not about like what kind of job they want to have. We do so much more than that. Um, the occupations are what are most important to the person that you're working with. It could be self-care, care of others, education, also in the workplace, um, but also play and leisure the things that give your life meaning, and what are the things that you want to get back to, or the things that you want to develop to improve your own um, personal engagement, quality of life, and promoting your own health and wellness. Um, and the client is not just an individual person. It could be the family or the caregivers. Um, we call that a client constellation. So it's not just the person you're working with, but the person that are within their social context, um, because people don't live in vacuums. They live amongst a social network, and they're very important to our, our process as well. A nurse practitioner or NP is a registered nurse with advanced education at the graduate level. Our practice includes acute, chronic, and preventative care. We conduct physical exams, diagnose, treat, consult on illnesses, order lab tests, and prescribe medication for our patients. As an advanced practice nurse, we can assist with all aspects of patient care. Depending on the environment, we can be part of a multidisciplinary team or have a solo practice. We can provide primary or specialty care depending on our focus of interest and specialty preparation in graduate school. NPs also support their patients in health promotion and disease prevention, which includes education on healthy lifestyle choices. Practice is regulated by the state in which you're licensed, and in most states today, experienced NPs can have independent practice. You will find nurse practitioners in a variety of specialty areas, including acute care, gerontology health, oncology, women's health, neonatal, psychiatric and mental health, and pediatric and child health. NPs also practice in subspecialties such as cardiovascular, hematology and oncology, neurology, sports medicine, and urology. When I encounter a new patient for the first time, I introduce myself, do a history, physical exam, then I sit down to discuss plans that are agreeable to the patient, I provide education, counseling, and next steps. My name is Elaine Gansfried, and I am a speech-language pathologist. Speech-language pathologists, or SLPs, are experts in communication and swallowing. Communication and swallowing are broad terms that encompass many functions. Communication includes speech production and fluency, language, cognition, voice, resonance, and hearing. Swallowing includes all aspects and stages of swallowing, as well as related feeding behaviors. The goal of speech-language pathology services is to optimize individuals' abilities to communicate and to swallow, thereby improving quality of life. SLPs work to prevent, assess, diagnose, and treat speech language, social communication, cognitive communication, and swallowing disorders in children and adults across the lifespan. SLPs work in many different settings, including education, healthcare, private practice, corporate, and research. We provide training and education to family, caregivers, and other professionals. We work collaboratively with professionals from many other disciplines, as communication is a human right that impacts all areas of our lives. Walk us through the steps you take when you encounter a new patient for the first time. Well, first I would review the chart. Then I would take some time to speak with the patient and the family. I need to make sure that I speak with all professionals involved in the patient's care. And then I'm going to determine the best course of action or their care plan.
My name is Jane Hames, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Social workers provide counseling and psychotherapy for individuals, families, and groups. We help people obtain direct services, such as food, shelter, and medical care, and provide social and health services for special populations and communities. In our work, we focus on the whole person, physical health, psychological functioning, and social situation. Social workers can be found in schools, hospitals, mental health centers, and social service agencies. We work in private practice, correctional facilities, nursing homes, and in rehabilitation programs for substance use. We help individuals across the lifespan who are facing disabilities, physical or mental illness, or are in crisis. Depression, anxiety, interpersonal and family issues are common concerns we address. Cognitive behavioral therapy, motivational interviewing, and supportive therapy are among the modalities commonly utilized to help clients reach their goals. Interdisciplinary collaboration with other therapists and medical professionals are integral to our practice and to our ongoing learning as mental health professionals. When I encounter a patient for the first time, I first assess the patient and the patient's problem. Am I the best match for this patient in terms of my skills and my practice area? What are the risks here? Suicide, self-destructive behaviors, substance abuse. Is it safe to treat this person in an outpatient private practice setting? What are the patient's goals? And who is the referral source? My name is Dr. Laurel Daniels Abrazizi, and I'm a physical therapist. Physical therapists identify, diagnose, and treat movement problems. We help people maintain or restore as much function as possible. Physical therapy helps to reduce the symptoms of many chronic diseases and conditions and helps people move more efficiently without pain, often by addressing strength, joint mobility, balance, and body mechanics. We work with individuals across the lifespan in a variety of settings, including children with neurodevelopmental disorders, adults with sports injuries and back pain, and adults at risk for falls. We optimize quality of life by designing treatment plans specific to each person's needs, challenges, and goals. We focus on movement loss prevention, optimal movement performance, and we help individuals overcome barriers to regular physical activity. PTs are integral members of the interprofessional collaborative care team, which vary by setting. All physical therapists are movement experts who team with physical therapist assistants to improve quality of life through hands-on care, patient education, and prescribed movement. The first step when meeting a new client is to take a comprehensive history, identify patient goals, and observe movement. How does collaborating with other practitioners help you optimize care? The initial nursing assessment is key in ensuring that patients get services of other disciplines as soon as possible. At times, the nurse identifies services that were not initially prescribed upon discharge from the inpatient facility. Timely interventions of other professionals result in shorter length of stay on service, better patient outcome and satisfaction, as well as better fiscal management. Collaborating with other practitioners really helps you get a sense of the big picture for your patients. It can help you identify factors you may not have thought of on your own, and that can really impact the effectiveness of your interventions and overall patient outcome. It's a great opportunity to learn from other professions and to share your expertise with them. And it helps the patient know that their healthcare team is working together to really come up with optimal care for them. Collaborating with other practitioners is so, so important. It's so important for an OT not to be working on their own, even though in practice, sometimes we are. Uh, and how are we gonna work with the other team members in order to make the client feel as productive and not stressed? Um, because we give them a lot of advice and a lot of things to do. And if everybody's giving things to do, what if things are conflicting? Or what if it's too much? The client can get overwhelmed and may decide not to do any of it because it feels like too much. So being a part of the team and making sure that everybody's in some kind of communication, whether it be in person, on Zoom, with an ongoing Google Doc, or some kind of shared notebook, so everybody's on the same page to provide the best possible care for our clients.
It's great collaborating with other providers. I work in a hybrid practice with a telemedicine focus in which the neurologist is readily available. It has been a great asset since I can quickly collaborate on patient care. What are some of the challenges to interacting with other practitioners? I think the biggest challenge is our current medical system. Not all settings have operationalized regular team meetings or reimbursement for collaborative communication. In settings where this is valued and supported, for example, in rehabilitation hospitals, it really makes a difference. As providers, we are trained to practice within our scope. Because of this, we tend to focus on our task, our perspective. Optimal patient care comes from hearing all sides and taking each provider's expertise into consideration. Finding time to communicate and collaborate with busy schedules is always a challenge. Competing agendas and priorities, allowing for equal contributions and not having one discipline dominate the discussion or care, valuing each discipline's role in the care of the patient. Some of the challenges to interacting with other practitioners involve coordinating contact by phone. Everyone is on a different schedule. Phone tag is common. Differing viewpoints on patient problems and needs is another challenge. But respectful, open dialogue with other professionals is key. Others' perspectives broaden understanding and enrich comprehensive care. What advice do you have for students who are entering the healthcare field? The most important advice I can give is ask questions. This is, continues to be an opportunity for you to learn as you enter the healthcare field as an entry-level practitioner. It's also really important to make the time to attend inter interdisciplinary rounds and meetings because this is a great way to build your relationships with your colleagues um, and assert yourself as an important and integral part of the interdisciplinary team. And lastly, be confident in the knowledge that you have, but be wise enough to recognize what you don't know. My advice for students include having a basic understanding of the scope of practice of other professionals, understanding that your contributions and that of every member of the healthcare team are valuable. Communication, 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 and keeping every member of the team informed. Having the skills required to work with other professions ultimately impacts patient care outcomes. Last but not least, be a lifelong learner as knowledge is ever evolving. My advice for students who are entering the healthcare field is to make sure you're prioritizing team meetings. It's so easy to get really focused, um, especially as a new practitioner, on what am I doing, what do I need to know, how am I evaluating, how am I documenting my sessions, how am I showing progress. It can be really overwhelming. But you need to make sure that you're talking uh, with your colleagues, other people on the team, and be in constant communication with them because you're all working together to make sure that the client is meeting their goals. And you want to make sure you're all on the same page and not contradicting each other or overwhelming the client with so much information um, to make sure that the client feels really focused and really productive. My advice for students is to learn as much as you can from other professionals on the team and build your own personal networks for collaboration. Be a change agent. If the structures aren't in place for collaborative communication, work to change practice. My advice to students entering the healthcare field is to research each field thoroughly before making your choice. Find the fit that best matches your strengths and goals. Then once you're in the program of your choice, seek ways to learn from and work with students from other disciplines. This way, you will be more effective as a future provider. Take every opportunity to collaborate with other professionals. Clarify everyone's role and communicate effectively. Be open-minded and respectful. Recognize that nobody knows everything and we can all learn from each other. The advice I would give to students in the healthcare field, be confident in your education and skills. Show your ability to work as part of a multidisciplinary team 
And remember, as a nurse practitioner, you fulfill a need that positively impacts patient care. My advice for students who are entering the healthcare field is to ask questions, be curious. You're not expected to have all the answers, even as a seasoned practitioner. Find colleagues and mentors who will help you learn and help you grow.